The Prusa Mark III, the printer that we've known for all these years, has finally been discontinued. But they do offer several upgrade options, like this 3.5 upgrade right here. But we have some questions. Should you upgrade? What exactly does that upgrade include? And what benefits is that upgrade going to give you? Let's find out. Hello everyone, Chris here. I've been using the Prusa Mark III for quite a while now. I got my first one back in 2018, and I now have several of these machines that I use on different projects all the time. And I'm going to say right at the top of this video, I'm not one to upgrade a 3D printer that's already doing a good job. I don't like to mess with success. But Prusa does have several options that you can do to upgrade your Mark III, like this one right here, the 3.5. This is the most cost-effective path for your Mark III. So there are some questions around that upgrade, and I intend to answer those today. Mainly, what's included in the kit, why would you want to upgrade to it, and is it going to improve your print quality and print experience? So let's just jump right in. We'll take a general look at the Mark III and the Mark 3.5 just to get a lay of the land. Here is the classic Prusa Mark III. This is actually one of the last ones to roll off the assembly line. I bought it right after they lowered the price of the Mark III because I do really like using these printers. They do a good job, the print quality is pretty good, they have a complete ecosystem with Prusa Slicer and their filament, and it just turns out a decent 3D print all in all. It's one of the most reliable printers that I've ever used. Having said that, it is getting pretty old as far as printers go. We've still got the LCD click wheel screen, which I actually kind of like. It does have removable steel sheets, which is always good, but we do have the older style V6 hot end from E3D. We've come a long way since then, even though this one still works just fine. Most of you know the specs of a Mark III, but we've got the Bontech drive gears, and the main thing we're focused around with the upgrade today is the board. This is still an Ultima Machine INC board, and it runs a 2560 processor that is 8-bit. And this is my original Mark III. It has thousands of hours on it, but we did upgrade it to a Mark 3.5. We did that on a live stream. Link in the description below if you'd like to see how that went. But really, the only parts on the 3.5 that we changed out were the LCD screen. This does have a touch option. It's also just a little bit shorter than the LCD if you're wondering if it'll fit in the lac enclosure. It will. And then the other biggest upgrade with that kit is the main board. We have the new Buddy board, it's 32-bit, it runs the newer versions of firmware. And that's where all the bang for the buck comes from. You can see it's swapped out to the new metal housing, it actually uses this housing as a heatsink, but we'll take a closer look at this board here in a moment. It also comes with a Wi-Fi module that you can put on the back to enable connectivity, and it has Ethernet access as well. There are a few other little bits here and there as far as maintenance upgrades go. There are some expansion nuts that you use to hold the bed on rather than the old standoffs. And there's a newer bed thermistor, but that's mostly just to pair it up with a new style of board. And just to get it out of the way, the Prusa Mark 3.5 upgrade is $250 US plus shipping. And that might seem like a lot of money, because I just told you, all you're getting is a new main board, main board housing, and a new color display. But there's lots of things to consider with this upgrade. We will continue to go through those later in this video. Now we're going to take a look at the buddy board. This is the main reason why you would want to upgrade to the 3.5. The buddy board is what's going to make all of the magic happen. It gets you to 32-bit. It's a faster processor. It is an STM32 ARM chip. Basically, it's going to be able to process G-code much faster than the old 8-bit chip can, and it's going to enable you to use features like Input Shaper. To improve 3D prints nowadays, we've pretty much stretched the hardware to its limits. We're now fixing things in software, and that's where Input Shaper comes in. Prusa has their own implementation of Input Shaper, which is available on all their newer machines, and this is the fastest, cheapest way to get your existing Mark III up to the level where their newer machines are. Things to note is they still are using the 2130 stepper driver. They have their reasons for that. They can do different things with 2130s where they couldn't with a 2209. You are converting over to a different type of plug for all of your connectors and all of those adapters are included with your kit. 
you get switched over to USB-C for connection. Again, you have an Ethernet port and they've switched to microfuses as well as screw down connectors for all the power lugs, which are much more convenient. And of course they have a header on the board to make it easy to add a Wi-Fi module, which is also included in this kit. It's a standard 8266 module, just like you would install on your Mini. We've used these for many projects over the years here on the channel. And of course you're going to get that new color LCD screen to control your new 32-bit board. It comes with the kit. But what we really need to be focused on here is that 32-bit firmware. That's where all the magic happens. Now in my opinion, the old 8-bit board with the firmware on it worked just fine. It turned out a nice 3D print. It did pretty much everything that I needed it to do. But with this new 32-bit firmware, it has some very impressive features. And by doing this 3.5 upgrade, you get to the next level of Prusa firmware and their newest ecosystem. Meaning, you will get to take advantage of all the firmware updates they're going to make for the next several years, just like we did with the Mark III. So it's a continuation of the existing ecosystem, and I think that's where all the value is with Prusa. Now, I want to prove what the 32-bit board and all that firmware goodness is going to get you. And I wanted to do a good use case for this and something that I could use around the shop. And what I really needed was a paper towel holder. And right now you're thinking, Chris, why do I care about your paper towel holder? I designed a couple of 3D printed parts to use with some 3 quarter inch PVC to hang right over my table that would hold my giant rolls of paper towels. I wanted it to be easy to use. You can just snap the PVC right in, but I did have to make a few parts. So why not make those parts on both these machines just to see which one might be better? So I came up with this part right here. It's a very simple part, but it does exactly what I need it to do. So what I wanted to do was slice one with the Mark III profile, print it out, see how we did, and then slice one with the 3.5 profile just to see what the difference would be. And when we're talking about our 3.5 upgrade, what we're really talking about is enabling you to print faster. It should give you better quality as well, but it's really going to increase the speed by going to the new 32-bit board and that firmware. And if we take a look in print settings and just go to the speed tab, this is what you're going to get with the 0.2 layer height speed profile on your Mark III. We've probably seen this many times before, anybody that's looked at one of these profiles. Note the perimeters around 60, you do have infill at 200, but these are pretty conservative speeds for a machine that we would see today. Remember, this old machine is 8-bit. So we'll slice one of these and send it to our Mark III, but then let's take a look at the 3.5. Same 0.2 layer height speed setting, but now if we take a look at print settings, you can see the perimeters, small perimeters, all of these settings are much, much higher. You're going to be able to reduce your print time, depending on the part, greatly and you should get better print quality. And that's what we're really talking about here, is speed. Getting that new 32-bit board, running that new firmware that enables all these new features like Input Shaper, that's going to give you a machine that runs much faster and it's going to improve the print quality. That software is able to tune the machine to achieve these new print results. And a machine like the Mark III is more than capable of handling that speed. It's not the most rigid machine in the world, but the speeds that we're talking about, the comparison between the Mark III and the 3.5, it's going to be very impressive. So that's what we're going to take a look at next. We're going to compare side by side the Mark III and the 3.5 just to see how quick it can turn out that part.
And we've got our test parts here. We'll take a look at these in a moment. But you saw from the time lapse, we were able to shave an hour off of our print time just by running on the 3.5 upgrade. And it's important to note, the larger in X and Y that your print object is, the more time you're going to save. It's all about acceleration. You saw those speed increases in the profile, but if you're not able to accelerate up to that speed, the part isn't large enough, there's lots of small movements, you're not going to get as much bang for the buck as you would on a larger print. Remember that really doesn't count for Z so much either. And also, note that these profiles are provided directly from Prusa for these machines. You don't have to design one yourself, the profiles are very clean right out of the box, they do a lot of testing with these. But now, let's take a look at the parts and the print quality increase that you're going to get. And here's the part that came off of our Mark III. Now, it's not the best print in the world, but it's more than functional. You can see some artifacts in here, as well as in the corners. There's a lot of ringing introduced. We've talked about that a lot over the years. But all in all, it's not a bad print. And depending on what you like to print, this is probably more than suitable for most 3D printing users. If you like to do a lot of functional prints, odds and ends, the Mark III is still a fantastic machine. Then we have the part from the 3.5. You'll notice that a lot of those artifacts have now gone away. There's no ringing in the corners. You can see some of the waviness that does get introduced by Input Shaper. I've seen that on pretty much any machine, but that's just how the software gets a lot of that ringing in those artifacts out. But if we take a look at all the other sides, this is a much higher quality print and the hardware didn't change at all. By changing up the hardware, you could even get a better print. But just with a software change, basically, getting that new board, allowing us to run that software, you achieve these types of results. And just to give you a side-by-side, -side, Mark III, 3.5. And that's exactly where I think you need to start considering this 3.5 upgrade and if you need it or not. Do you do a lot of functional parts? Do you need to turn them out really quickly? If not, the Mark III is going to be a great machine for you. In fact, now they're lower cost than ever. You can get them used on the market and given their reliability, you could still have a nice quality 3D printer and you could always upgrade to it later. But if you currently have a Mark III and you like to print faster, you'd like to print more parts in less amount of time and have them look just a little bit better on top of that, the 3.5 is a great choice. It's 250 bucks. It's cheaper than getting a new machine. Also, if you wanted to add a 3D printer, you need to consider that. You could get twice as much output if you had two machines. So that might be a choice you need to consider if you're getting another Mark III or another type of printer altogether. That might be the better way to go. But I can tell you, just by using it, the limited amount that I have, the 3.5 is very impressive as far as the speed bump and the quality that you get on a pretty low cost upgrade. But wait, there's more. Now remember on the Mark III, on the back of your main board, you have an option to add something like a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero Two. It has headers on it, you plug it into the back of the board. This is gonna enable you to run Octoprint, Prusa Link slash Prusa Connect if you wish to get access to your printer via Wi-Fi, which can make it really handy to use in Prusa Connect or any other software you might use to send it files. But you have to add this Pi. Going to the 3.5 upgrade, as I mentioned before, you do have Ethernet connectivity as well as the added Wi-Fi module on the back of the board. So you can set up all that connectivity natively. And if you upgrade to the 3.5 and you already have a Pi on your Mark III, you're going to gain a Pi for other projects. That actually might be pretty advantageous for some users. It seems kind of silly, but having an extra Pi is never a bad thing. 
all of your connectivity then after this upgrade is done right here from the control screen you can go to network you can use Wi-Fi or Ethernet collect your IP address use it all right from here and then integrate it with Prusa Link and Prusa Connect so consider that when looking at the upgrade as well. You do get away from that Pi. You can go straight from Prusa Slicer to Link to Connect to get files to your printer. It does make it a lot more seamless. There's less parts involved. Also, you do get away from the old school SD card and they've moved over to a USB drive. That can be a handy feature if you're not into the whole connectivity thing. And those are just the main features of the 3.5 upgrade. But with the 32-bit firmware, there's a lot of nice-to-have features that you might not realize. And really, it's a lot of little things. Like when you select your prints, you have a thumbnail that shows on the screen to make sure you're printing the right thing. Also, things like when you do your auto level, you no longer need to process all 49 points or 9 points if that's what you're doing. It only levels the area that you're going to print in. You also need to consider features like power loss recovery. If you were using a Raspberry Pi, an Octoprint, or even Prusa Link, Prusa Connect before, you couldn't use features like power loss recovery because you were going to lose the power to that Pi. The way this works with Prusa Link and Prusa Connect on these machines, everything you load through that site gets loaded directly onto your USB flash drive, and then it can use those features like power loss recovery directly from here. So you're actually printing from this drive no matter where you loaded it from. And think about something as simple as flashing the firmware to your 3.5 machine. In the old days on your Mark III, you'd get a USB cable, you'd download the file, you'd use Prusa Slicer, you connect it up, and you'd flash that file over. With 3.5 and the newer machines, you can even load your firmware via Prusa Connect. In fact, it will tell you if you have an old version and download it for you. But then it puts it on the USB drive, you can hit flash directly from the site and it'll do all the work. Or you could always just load the file right here on the drive and do it at the screen, but you have those options. There's just lots of nice little creature comfort features involved in the newer firmware versions. So should you upgrade your Prusa Mark III to a 3.5? As always, there's a lot to this and I can't really tell you one way or the other if you should, but I can give you insight on how I do 3D printing. Now, I'm the type of person that does a lot of functional 3D prints, I do a lot of iterative testing, and I have a couple of these Mark III's. Multiple printers is always going to be faster than a faster machine. So I really don't care that much about print quality as long as the part is accurate and it serves its purpose. So I would stick with my Mark III machines, there's nothing wrong with them. But there's another type of person that really does like to print a lot faster and is concerned with that print quality. And having the machine already, just being able to use that platform, you already know it's reliable, you know how to utilize the machine, you just want to have all of those new features, the 3.5 might be the way to go. It is very impressive. And remember, you're going to get all of those features from now on. All the things they develop in the future are going to be compatible with that 3.5 because you have the new board and you're in that new firmware ecosystem. It is kind of a bummer on the older machines. These have 8-bit boards. They won't be able to run that, but they did have their day in the sun. So hopefully you found this helpful if you're deciding about your upgrade of your machine. That will be it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.